the mountains sing to the sea raise your voices lift your heart this is the day the lord has made let all the earth rejoice i will give thanks to you my lord you have answered my plea you have saved my soul from death you are my strength and my song sing to the mountains sing to the sea My dear brothers and sisters, I welcome you to this Eucharistic celebration of love, peace and joy. As we are in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, let us surrender ourselves, our intentions and petitions before the Lord. Let us begin this Holy Eucharist by signing ourselves in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the Feast of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. We pray today through the intercession of our Blessed Mother that we may all imbibe the qualities of our Mother, very specially the, the important quality of pondering. May all that happens in our life, good or bad, may we always ponder with a reflective and with a prayerful way and thus know what God wants from each one of us. We pray for this grace during this Holy Eucharist. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Let us pray together. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who prepared a fit dwelling place for the Holy Spirit in the heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary, graciously grant that through her intercession we may be a worthy temple of your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Lamentations, chapter 2, verses 2 to 10, 14, 18 to 19. The Lord has consumed without pity all the dwellings of Jacob. He has torn down in his anger the fortresses of daughter Judah. He has brought to the ground in dishonor her king and her princes. On the ground in silence sit the old man of daughter Zion. They strew dust on their heads and gird themselves with sackcloth the maidens of Jerusalem bow their heads to the ground. 
Born out from weeping are my eyes. Within me all is in ferment. My gall is poured out on the ground because of the downfall of the daughter of my people. A child and infant faint away in the open spaces of the town. In vain they ask my mothers, Where is the grain? As they faint away like the wounded in the streets of the city and breathe their last in the mother's arms. To what can I liken or compare you, O daughter of Jerusalem? What example can I show you for your comfort, virgin daughter Zion? For great as the sea is your downfall, who can heal you? Your prophets had for you false, specious visions. They did not lay bare your guilt to avert your fate. They beheld for you in vision false and misleading portents. Cry out to the Lord, Moon, O daughter of Zion. Let your tears flow like a torrent day and night. Let there be no respite for you, no response for your eyes. Rise up, shrill in the night. At the beginning of every watch, pour out your heart like water in the presence of the Lord. Lift up your hands to Him for the lives of your little ones who faint from hunger at the corner of every street. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A responsorial psalm. Your response. Lord, forget not the souls of your poor ones. Lord, forget not the souls of your poor ones. Why, O God, have you cast us off forever? Why does your anger smolder against the sheep of your pasture? Remember your flock, which you built up of old, the tribe you redeemed as your inhabitants, Mount Zion, where you took up your abode. Your response? Lord, forget not the souls of your poor ones. Turn your steps towards the utter ruins, toward all the damage the enemy has done in the century. Your foes roar triumphantly in your shrine. They have set up their tokens of victory. They are like men coming up with axes to clump of trees. Your response? Lord, forget not the souls of your poor ones. With chisel and hammer, they hack paneling of the sanctuary. They set your sanctuary on fire, the place where your name abides. They have raised and profaned. Your response? Lord, forget not the souls of your poor ones. Look to your covenant, for the hiding places in the land and the plains are full of violence. May the humble not retire in confusion. May the afflicted and the poor praise your name. Your response? Lord, forget not the souls of your poor ones. Gospel Acclamation Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed is the Virgin Mary who kept the word of God and pondered it in her heart. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O God. Every year, the parents of Jesus used to go to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up for the feast as usual. When they were on their way home after the feast, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem without his parents knowing it. They assumed he was with the caravan. And it was only after a day's journey that they went to look for him among their relations and acquaintances. When they failed to find him, they went back to Jerusalem looking for him everywhere. Three days later, 
they found him in the temple sitting among the doctors listening to them and asking them questions and all those who heard him were astounded at his intelligence and his replies they were overcome when they saw him and his mother said to him my child why have you done this to us see how worried your father and i have been looking for you why were you looking for me he replied did you not know that i must be busy with my father's affairs but they did not understand what he meant he then went down with them and came to nazareth and lived under their authority his mother stored up all these things in her heart the gospel of the lord praise to you lord jesus christ my dear brothers and sisters in jesus christ yesterday we celebrated the feast of the sacred heart of jesus and today we are celebrating the feast the immaculate heart of mary my dear brothers and sisters these both devotions are linked with each other very closely because mary's role in the church is inseparable from her union with christ and it flows directly from it we cannot separate jesus and mary both these devotions are inseparable my dear brothers and sisters the devotion to the immaculate heart of mary was popularized by saint john eudes he was the one who had a deep love for the immaculate heart of mary and it was he who propagated and made it more common and began celebrating this immaculate heart of mary because of the love that he had and later on when he was later canonized by pope pius the 12th he was later on in the sense his devotions that he had developed and popularized became into a feast when in later pope pius the 12th in 1944 he made it into a feast when the world was in chaos of the world war 2 the world was torn apart the world was in chaos and it was this time at this moment into this into this deep depression period pope pius the 12 he dedicated the world to the patronage of the immaculate heart of mary he placed the world into the protection of the immaculate heart of mary my dear brothers and sisters what is the difference between these two devotions the devotion to the sacred heart of jesus and to the devotion to the immaculate heart of mary when we look at the first devotion the devotion towards the sacred heart of jesus here it is more emphasized the love that god has for each one of us that is precisely what the sacred heart of jesus reveals us his deep love for the humanity though we sometimes are able to grasp sometimes we go against this love sometimes we reject this love sometimes you know we backstab this love but the love of jesus can never be stopped from loving us he continues to love us unconditionally and he has revealed this love for each one of us through saint faustina and he will always love us because god only knows to love us he doesn't know to hate us so the devotion of the sacred heart teaches us the emphasis of god's love for each one of us the second devotion the immaculate heart of mary 
The Immaculate Heart of Mary devotion emphasizes Mother Mary's deep love for God. My dear brothers and sisters, Mary was the only human person who was chosen by God and, he was, and she was kept aside from the sin. And Mary showed us throughout her life, right from the, when the moment she was uh, called to be the mother of God, till her death, she always loved God unconditionally. She was never divided in her love. And therefore, Immaculate Heart of Mary becomes the model for each one of us. Meaning, we are to follow the example of Immaculate Heart of Mary because she teaches each one of us how we should love God. Sometimes we are divided. Our love is divided. But this Immaculate Heart of Mary teaches us that we should always love God undivided. And precisely this was the message that she gave in Fatima to those three shepherd children. My dear brothers and sisters, we are called today to love God unconditionally. We are called to love God like a mother did. My dear brothers and sisters, now coming to the gospel of today, we saw that how Mary and Joseph took Jesus to the temple and as they were returning, they thought that he was with their relatives. And when later after a day, when they realized that he was not there in their, with their relatives, they both go back to Jerusalem to search for Jesus. And on the third day, they find Jesus. And Mary is the one who tells Jesus, Son, why have you done to us this? And Jesus promptly says to her, Didn't you know that I should be busy in my father's house? And the gospel tells us that Mary didn't say a word. She did not understand what he said. But Mary kept all that thing in her heart. My dear brothers and sisters, what exactly Mary did when Jesus gave her that answer? She kept in her heart and pondered. It is in her ponderings with a reflective, prayerful mood, God made clear to her or opened to her the mysteries, made clear to her the will of God. And all that things happen in the life of Mother Mary when she pondered on the things which she didn't understand. She did not react to Jesus' answer, but she kept that in her heart and pondered over those things. My dear brothers and sisters, today's feast invites us to have this contemplative heart. We are called to have this contemplative heart like Mary, a mother had. In our day-to-day -day activities, in our day-to-day -day lives, many things happen. We plan something, whereas something else happens, and we are not able to understand. And most of us, or many of our times, we react, we question, or sometimes we know we abandon our prayers, we abandon going to church, because why this happened to me? But today this feast reminds us that whenever certain things happen in our lives which we don't understand why, it is good for us to have this contemplativeness in our life. Let us contemplate whatever happens in our life in a prayerful mode like Mary a mother did. And when we will reflect, when we will ponder and when we'll contemplate on all those things that are happening in my life, I will see the hand of God behind everything. I will understand the mystery of God. I will understand the will of God for me in my life. So my dear brothers and sisters, as we participate in this Holy Eucharist, we pray that we may all imbibe this contemplative heart of our blessed Mother Mary. 
May God give us the grace and strength to ponder, reflect, and contemplate all that happens in our life. Amen. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of all His holy church. Look, O Lord, upon the praise and offerings of your faithful, presented in the commemoration of Blessed Mary, the Mother of God, that they may be pleasing to you and may confer on us your help and forgiveness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly even to earth's ends you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew form, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Save us, Savior of the earth By you Cross and resurrection You have set us free Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of His death and resurrection, 
We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Derek, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Francis de Sales and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co has return in life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, a God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by His divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Having been made partakers of eternal redemption, we pray, O Lord, that we, 
who commemorate the mother of your son may glory in the fullness of your grace and experience its continued increase for our salvation through Christ our Lord Amen the Lord be with you and with your spirit may almighty God bless you the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit Amen the mass is ended let us go and live Jesus thanks be to God my dear brothers and sisters I wish each and every one of you a very happy feast of the Immaculate Heart of Mary have a nice day Are the pro-